being we were in Ezekiel and uh, talking about Judah and about these black Hebrew Israelites, these these guys that claim to be Judah, and they claim a lot of things that aren't true, but Um, there was something there was something else the Lord wanted me to bring out and so Slakia Slakia so we know that Judah Judah these I'm trying to figure out exactly what it is about these Judites these and these guys might be they might be right Judah might be these Negroes partially maybe the maybe they got toasted maybe that's why they're black I don't know maybe the Lord toasted them maybe that was a, a sign there's a mark on them I don't know. Why are you why are you bucking up against me? Tahar, Gabar, spiritual life lessons, you Muppets. Who do you think you are? If you if you know you're Judah, don't you know it's time to fucking wake the fuck up? And they won't listen. Which is the strangest thing. Some sick. If that's Judah, that's some sick shit, man. That's that's what do they call it? That's terminal. It's princess. I'm worried that you know. I'm not here to I'm not here to hurt anyone. I'm the good prophet. And now it's a sad thing because a lot of time has passed. A lot of water under the bridge. A lot of regenerations. A lot of bullshit. A lot of anger. A lot of sadness. A lot of fucking... That's Judah Benjamin. We, we hunt in the morning. We, we take our prey at noon and we devour the spoil in the evening. The nations also heard of him, and he was taken in their pit, and they brought him with chains under the land of Egypt. So this is where we, we we're fallen, and now we're in Egypt, we're in these chains of darkness, right? The Bible just is going to say the same thing over and over again. I'm not your average bear, people. But she was plucked up in fury. She was cast down to the ground. She was cast down to the ground. Do you understand? The angels that were cast down to the earth, to the ground, the fallen angels, come on, niggas. You know who I am? I do. Do you know who I am? You better. I don't have no power here. All I have right now is my voice to tell you I will have power. It's a sad thing. I'm stripped, naked, 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 naked. I'm, tra I'm trapped. I'm in this body. I don't, I don't belong here. This is, this is the sadness of being a fallen angel, of being a fallen angel. So what's it say? These verses seem to address the present king, Zedekiah, as a reminder that her past Israel was fruitful and full of branches. However, her doom is so certain that it is pictured as complete. She was plucked up in fury. The statement that she has no strong rod is a reference to the fact that Zedekiah was the last king of the nation. Not until the millennial reign of Jesus Christ will Israel have another king. King David ain't coming. Until Jesus comes back, right? 
How many times do I have to say it? You dumb fucking black Hebrew niggerites. You guys are fucking lame. You're broken. You can't hear. You're, you're going to get destroyed. I'm sorry. You blew it. You fucked up. You don't know who you are. You'll never know who you are until you get to the kingdom. And you're going to be sad. Very sad. Very, 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 very sad. J.D. Najah, I'm out. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you, brethren, you fellow followers and believers of this faith, and Shalom to the elect. So, anyway, this video was shared to me by Lions, Lions of Yahweh Shah, Space 100% Truth. Um, so, uh, I checked this video out and he wasn't saying much about anything, but for doctrine's sake, uh, he said that, um, we could be partially Israelites, Judah, as he say, so it's not so much about skin color, but he's making it about that. But a good portion of the Jake's here in this, you know, in America's are Judah, right? So he says, that we were cursed black. Now this goes back to those Christian nationalists. Um, he follows a form of left-hand side Hebrew Israelism as vocab like to call it British Hebrew Israelism, which he would be, this guy would be the one through Christianity, right? Through slavery that would continue to push white plantation Christianity on you. And it just seems like that he's more and more upset in his spirit. He knows that if he is Edom, which I perceive to be, because some of our people would behave like this, but this guy has too much hatred for Jake on, on some other level. So he doesn't see, right, you know, he wants the birthright back. And this is what it all goes back to. As I said in the video, that the major iconoclasm happened when Yahawasha, well, let me say Isaac, was tricked by Rebecca, right, and made Jacob fairy, <laughs> right? And Isaac, uh, um, you know, and, and, and Jacob was... Uh, you know, which means supplanter, it was believed to be the firstborn when it was actually Esau. You see what the Most High does? Then, which all came from the Heavenly Father to use the trickery, and then bless Esau with the sword just so he can do what he do just to have a reason to come back and get him. So, the rabbit hole goes deep, but that's what it is. This is why they take those images and they try to repaint them. They try to cover it up. Anything Edom do isn't new. Even on the left-hand side, a lot of the stuff he stole, he doesn't do anything righteously. But let's go to Genesis 4. I just want to read this quick. Cain murders Abel. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him and the Lord said unto Cain where is Abel thy brother and he said I know not am I my brother's keeper and he said what hast thou done the voice of thy brother's blood crieth up to me from the ground and thou art thou cursed from the earth right and now art thou cursed from the earth which have opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand when thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. So what they're saying is that the curse of Cain was cursed black. Now we all know melanin and the earth, um, the, the dirt is different shades of color the plant has plants have vegetation and chlorophyll everything on earth the animals even the bugs 
have some form of protection. So what's up with this? So I don't know how being cursed with being so-called plagued with skin color or protection would be a curse. But this is what they would have you think from all the white supremacy. Anyway, and we'll get an example. Anyway, and Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth. Why from the face of the earth? Because there are certain features of the earth that is natural. Then it says, and from my face shall be hid. And from thy face shall be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. Okay, so let's go to Numbers 12. Let's go to Numbers 12. And um, now we know this is the story about Miriam, Miriam, Moses, Miriam, and Aaron. Miriam had an issue with Moses and his wife of another nation, but had nothing to do with skin color. And this is white supremacy. They put up, they cover, they they uh, tell us that we're not supposed to, um, you know, it's hatred to have a black Messiah up. It's hatred to believe the Lord is so-called black. But then they show this story, and all through YouTube, they'll show Moses is a white man and Miriam is a black woman and, and call it a race. When skin color technically has not that much to do with race. It couldn't be one so-called black man with the race of another so-called black woman. This is how dumbed down uh, people are, man. Anyway, I'm going to just get to the point. It says, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, right? Which is Aaron and Miriam. And he departed. And a cloud departed from off the tabernacle. And behold, Miriam became leprous. Why did snow? Why didn't Aaron become leprous? Because Miriam would have been the talker. And Aaron looked upon Miriam. <laughs> and he had to have a serious look like, what the hell? And behold, she was leprous. Right? Probably still had that long hair. That long hair probably turned blonde too. Right? And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord. So this is Aaron speaking actually to Moses. And say, Alas, my Lord. I beseech you, mean to call out. Lay not this sin upon us. You remember, you know, in the story of Exodus, when Moses put his hand in his uh, bosom and it came out white, you know? Uh, can you imagine that? And it seemed like it's the same thing here. Lay not this sin upon us. Wherein we have done foolishly. Foolishly. This is why when a woman does something wicked and a curse comes, you, you are part of the curse too. Because you're together. Okay. We have done foolishly, and we are in, we have wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead. Now, why did he say that? Why did he say that? Let her not be as one dead, because the way she looked was not healthy. Now, you mean to tell me, as this man is saying, that the Judites were cursed black, which they get that out of the Mormons too. Which that all come from, you know, the, the old the, the old eighteen hundred stories of religions and John Smith and you had different spinoffs of the Catholic Church. But anyway, as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed. Wait a minute, this is not making any sense that it would talk about the flesh being black. And this, and then it really gets distorted because Job 30 and 30 says, my skin is black upon me. Right? So this is not adding up to this man. 
This is not adding up. This is this guy. Let's go to Habakkuk 2. Yea, also, 2 and 5, yea, also, be, he, he transgresseth by wine. He is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who, who enlargeth his desire as hell and as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gather unto him all nations, and heapeth to him all people. Right? Shall not all these take up a parable against him? And a taunting and a proverb against him, saying, Woe to him that increases that which is not his. How long? And to him that laid of himself with thick clay. He got a serious debt. We go to eight. Because thou hast spoiled many nations. Who else is this? What manner of people? He needs to pick up a mirror and look into this mirror and look at most of his kind. Now, it's not to say you can't have some brown skin and be an Edomite too. Because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall be spoiled, shall spoil thee because of men's blood and for violence of the land of the city and of all that dwell therein. So through process of elimination, when you really look at the history, when you look at Deuteronomy 28 and 54, I believe, and 64, and 68, the yokes of iron and slavery and scattered amongst all people. Joel, the third chapter, is given a boy for a hall and the soul a girl for wine that they might drink. This is crazy that we have now, uh, you know, finished or accomplished, well, let me say finished, almost out of this captivity. And these, these particular people want to horn in on our salvation. You know, that's like running a race. You done ran four laps. You done bust your ass. You done struggled all through practice for the last month just to get to the race. And then you wait to the third lap and then you hurry up and try to jump in and run like you've been running the whole time. And you all fresh. But see, you might get away there, but you ain't going to get away when it comes to the Lord. See, Hebrews 12 says, I think 12 and 7 said he's uh, he is a profane person. He sold his birthright for a morsel of meat. John 10 and 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door entereth to the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. These guys will do whatever it takes to try to read salvation. He understands. He knows this is really bothering him inside that we are the biblical Israelites. And he can't accept it. Nobody knows the Bible like us. And we're talking about all the one West groups. Well, most of them, the major ones, you know, but us, we thrive on a hundred percent truth of doctrine, right? This is why they come up with it. And we even, come against these other doctrines and other one west israelites and confound them to the point that they're calling us names and making false allegations towards us so you know to have the truth is is you know you living dangerously you know but hey it's what the lord wants this guy just he wants to be a part of it he wants to sneak in but he can't have it it's your turn now, buddy. It's time for you to serve. You know, that thousand years. You know? That's all I have on that, Shalom.